Oh. And welcome back to the Ego Review for episode <laughs> two of Galaxy of Fantabulous Wonderment. Ta da! Surprise! Look, she's back. We haven't You've missed paused. so much. We haven't paused. Yeah, Gabriel's look. still as tired and constantly yawning as he was last week. No, no, I'm starting to, I'm starting to get that weird past tired point. So now we got. She bro- looks like just fucking done with it. So now we got Bromie back, but she's catatonic. Oh, okay. Because she was well, plugged into the think tank. That explains that then. Excellent now. representation of catatonic there. That's credit for you. Now, the side quest that I talked about in the last video that lets you use the cloak uh, in battle mm-hmm. uh, is uh, getting Bromede her brain back. But we're not going to bother with that. Ah, <laughs> oh, so we don't fix Bromede? No. Well, she oh. fixes herself before the uh, oh. like very end of the game. Okay. Before the epilogue. But uh, what we need to do to fix Bromade is firstly to go back to Taribus 6, which is where she first came under the extra Noid spell, uh-huh. and talk and click on her there. Mm-hmm. And then we go to the bloody towel and click on her again. What happens that, when you click on her? Oh, she, well, they, there's just a, like a little bit of dialogue that establishes they're slightly getting through to her. Oh, okay, so you try to talk to her and she kind of goes meh, meh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Meh, back at you. And then you take her to the bloody towel, which we know was the next place she went to after she, her mind was taken over. Mm-hmm. And the dialogue continues a bit more. And then finally we take her to Thermos 8, where she was in the think tank, and that snaps her out of it. So that's how you do it, people. So it's really, it's just a drive around. Yeah, basically. Yeah. You could probably, like, figure it out logically, right? Yeah. Don't see why not. Now let's cash in no, we all didn't those... do that, so she's just a vegetable for the rest of the game. Let's cash in those Colthorps we uh, killed. How many did you get? How many did you get? 14. 14. 1,400 credits. Douche. <laughs> the protected zone. Pew. All right, so... But, but since we already paid the $3,000 What's fee... the goal now, now that I've got bromide out and maths has touched me in my sleep? Because uh, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to keep my we, mind on, like, the, the, the drive. Like, what's a drive? What are we doing? Now we go back to the higher plane to, uh, re- like, um, regroup with the high ones. Okay. Okay. So we, we've completed a task. We're going to go back and get the new task. Yes. And now Okey we're dokey, also... Pokey. Give now him toss potty scepters. Now we're going to give him his scepters to get the special reward. Which is a reward that kind of breaks the game, but it's already broken, so who cares? <laughs> we've got a shield regenerator that regenerates shields. And it even does that in the turn-based battles, like, outside of the turn-based thing. So you can just, like, wait wait for it to be your turn and then wait for a while. Oh, so it operates just while it's your turn? Yeah, just constantly. (laughs) So you can just go... And your your health just comes back. Yeah, so that was bad design on my part. (laughs) Silly me. Uh, maybe have it so it operates only after the fight's over. So you can get like a little bit of health back at the end of each fight, regardless of what you do. Well, thanks for the advice, Mr. Several Years After the Fact. Yeah, where was I 12 years ago? God, 2003, where was I 12 years ago? Well, maybe like a, bit of, a couple of years after that. That was just when I first came to Australia. All right, and, yeah, that's uh, right. I know I made this game in my first few years in Australia. and I couldn't put a finger on exactly when. Yeah, where were you 12 years ago? Were you moving to another country? I doubt you were. No. I wasn't chasing some girl around the planet. Yeah. It's a silly thing to do, (laughs) Yahtzee. Hey, it worked out. Did it? Yeah. Well, I I, I consider my life to have only truly started after I got to this country. That's when I started uh, becoming a writer professionally. That's when I started... in. Living by myself independently. I never in my life have ever thought that coming to Brisbane could be like the start of someone's life. Well, it's just, you know, a drastic upheaval. I know, I know. Being like far, it's, far it's away from you. a support network. It's just, you know. Worked for me. From my perspective, it's just a funny sentence. Oh. oh the extra noids killed the high ones. Shit. Fuck you, extra noids, you racists. Oh, so you found all of your success in Brisbane. There you go. Tourism, Brisbane. Come here. <laughs> well, I found my Fuck success life on up. the internet. <laughs> yeah. So it could have been anywhere, really. I could have been on the moon. Now, there's that a strange... Makes sense. I could see you as like a moon dweller. Now, this, the high ones have carved as a strange symbol to signal our next move. Ah! Uh, Zordon. It's an extra noid. Ah, oh, is that what the extra noids are? Yeah. Remember we saw one at the start of the game? No, I just said Zordon and you didn't address what it was. Okay. 
It was an extra noise. Oh, okay. There you go. I thought See, it was it's recruiting. It's all becoming clear now. Are you still intrigued by the mystery plot? Um, a little bit. I imagine he's just trying to recruit Power Rangers because I just can't see him <laughs> as anything else now. Rangers, Rita Repulsa. Zordon looked like a fat guy. He was a fat guy. Yeah. How he does an energy being space. get? Yeah. How does an energy being get fat? From eating too much energy. <laughs> energy pies. They have too many red balls. Oh, I just need more energy pies. So now we're establishing that beautiful. The hole is saying, "Hey, the high one's just been killed. We're way out of our depth. Yeah, <laughs> Let's just fucking give up." So, so now they're saying we're going to drop you off back on Earth and and fuck the rest of the plot. <sighs> and Eric reluctantly agrees. Oh man, I'm going to fly oh, no. this fucking ship into that stupid face and tell him fuck you. What a disappointing way to end the plot. Womp, womp. And then we fly back and we land on Earth and we land next to a house where some guy's coding a game and his name is Boggle. Uh, I managed to resist. His name is Boggle Crochet. I managed to resist inserting myself into this game except in with the main except character, as a, except as proxy, yes. <laughs> Who does look a bit like you? Well, I'd I'd like to think I'm not as weedy as Dan Gordon. No, you've got a you've, you've you've got a natural bulk. I, I maintain you should start hitting weights. Also, I have ambition. I only worked data entry to make money while I pursued my creative career. Mm. Dan was it. Dan was directionless until he was caught up in space adventures. Right, so he was abducted and taken to space Brisbane. Okay. Now he's got purpose. Yeah, the, 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 the elaborate... green girls, the girl you crossed the seas to visit. You know, I guess it's true. You can't really separate a work of art from its creator, can you? No. Okay, back to Earth, which is far, far away from all the uh, spaceports. You'll notice <laughs> a backwater world of little practical In the interest. Hillbilly corner that nobody visits. Of course. Because that's Earth in the cynical science fiction universe, isn't it? Mm. Always got to denigrate Earth at some point. Puny Earthlings. Puny Earth. Yeah, kid. Dickbag. Oops. Oh dear, the extranoids aren't going to let you disappear. What? I don't know what I have, you fucking stupid faces. It's uh, something, you, I guess, that you somehow acquired while, when you beamed your own brain in the think tank. Self-confidence? Uh, the ability to speak in pig Latin. <laughs> that is a good ability. There yes. you go. Look at that. That's, that's what the faces need. See, this is like a, like a plot uh, tran tran warp jump. And you still lose fuel in it. So I'm just wondering what happens if you don't have enough fuel to make that jump. Oh, you are fucked, son. I can't Unless remember. it's your first time running out of fuel. I can't remember what I did. I think I might have done something to like get around it. Really? Oh, it isn't no. just a fucking like I think it's, I think you've cornered the player. So bear that in mind, people. Make sure you always have fuel. That's, that's important. So yeah, now we know that the extranoids want whatever's in our head so badly. Eric's back on board. Yep, they're gonna carve your head open and scoop out some sweet, delicious maths. So and they're gonna not... understand the universe and they're gonna move in. Now, Hole tries to enlist support from Bromide there. Because she's still brainwashed, she replies with a dot, dot, dot. If we'd uh, unbrainwashed her, she'd spend most of the rest of the game asleep. So she'd reply with a <laughs> snore in so the cutscene. Of little material value to the game. Well, we wouldn't want her to get in the way. That's one in of those. The unfinished build. One of those choices that's not a choice. <laughs> in the unfinished build for Escape from the Dimension of Insidious Cruelitude, the <laughs> plot is the four, like the four of you, were down again. Yep. Uh, oh, uh, so it directly picks off with the same characters. Yeah, it's the four of you again. But uh, Dan is made captain basically because a new crisis situation arises and the crew have like gotten into the habit of taking turns to be captain whenever there's a crisis. So that like, everyone gets to share the blame. <laughs> and then in Spin that, the wheel of captain. In that game, the, fun the game functions are divided between three consoles. Wow, we. Uh, so uh, you interact with Bromide a lot more in that game. Yeah, now she's relevant. Yes. A one female character in the game and she doesn't do anything and is retarded. Hey, Eric's female, genetically. <laughs> yeah, that's right. No, she's just a fighting fuck toy, Yahtzee. It's so clear. It's just Dirty. look at that, it's just a male gaze construction in the corner. Dirty Laura's a female character pubes. and she's strong. She she fixes our ship. Yeah. 
So that's strange to take a dump on her in toilets. So we travelled to Dr. Remus 3 to consult the university about that mysterious symbol we saw and the mysterious <laughs> mathematical formula we have in our head. <laughs> and the symbology guy is the same as the guy is the mathematics guy. Of course. Okay, now this will be our next lead. The symbol that the High Ones drew for us will lead us to an archaeological dig. Oh, have we come across that planet yet? We haven't uh, beamed down yet. We're going to the Necronox asteroid belt. Oh, okay. Cool. I didn't know you could beam down there. Well, you can. It's not that obvious, I admit, because it's an asteroid belt. Yeah. But you can. Do you have to choose which specific lump, or do you just you just get plonked there and you're no, okay? It's, it's, the, it's basically another infinite terrain planet. Oh, okay. Can I go explore an asteroid belt, kids? Yay! Yay! I think gonna... Cosmos, eat your heart out. Look at look at that. Some fucking graphics for you, you spoiled pieces of shit. Time for more upgrades, because yeah. we're moneyed little shits. Woo! I could get some more red shirts. Don't want to run out of those. I'll be on the other side of the universe and want to beam down and not be able to. Yeah, how much of an issue can that be if, you know, you're not you playing the game you made? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Depends how inattentive people are, I suppose. How was this game received? Um, I don't think as many people downloaded it as the Chizome Mythos and stuff. The people who did play it seemed to like it. Oh, good on them. There seems to be this stigma against funny sci-fi. Like they say, really? like they say it doesn't sell so well. Like yeah. I've been trying to like find a publisher for a funny sci-fi book, but we've been hearing a lot that uh, some people are just loath to touch it at all, really. What a boring world. I guess Hitchhiker's Guide was the aberration. I love funny. I love funny sci-fi, funny horror. Well, it's funny sci-fi in particular. People don't seem to like funny fantasy. People are all over that. Terry Pratchett and all that. Well, just there you go. I mean, you just got to change a few words in your book and it's more or less the same thing. Just spaceship to like eagle. And there, it's like, I'm flying, I'm a magic eagle, it's a fantasy book now, you pieces of shit. Well, that's the thing, you can't really separate science fiction from this plot. I've Contemptible written. audience of buttholes. Because the plot centers around science fiction concepts. Like, as, all such good, as? as all good science fiction concepts. Let's fantasy this book, let's fix this. No. We'll get it published. No. I don't want to give too much away. Cold. I mean, it might. It still might never find a publisher and never get published. So we don't want, we don't want to give people too much hope, you know. Called Mongonaut versus the Tickle Elves. That's going to be a revolutionary fantasy series but that hey, spans eight books. If you're watching this and you run an international publisher who's interested in funny <laughs> sci-fi, then hey, get in touch. I would believe publishers just sit at the desk, just looking at YouTube clips until someone shows them something interesting. I doubt it. I know you're out there listening to us with your books. Slowly going mad as the world shifts away from that medium, trying to work out how you can make money off of e-publishing. Well, you know. There's always um, curating. What's curating? You know, like, in, even like an online store, you can have a serve like... If there's too much product, oh, you need like yeah. a service to recommend okay. stuff. Yeah, no, that's fine. There's still like money in that. I love people respect at... something that's been published by an official company. They're like, yes, that must be good then. Yeah, the idea is there's been a filtration process. Oh, I love looking at self-published shit. Oh, and here that we are. stuff is just glorious. And here we are on the Necronox belt. North. We're going to jump from one asteroid to another. That's, that's what we're doing. Sha, 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 sha. He can. That's It's just it's space. It's probably fuck all. Oh. I don't think we see it in the video, but uh, the thing that kills you if you keep walking around this area is not having oxygen. Because you're not wearing a space helmet, <laughs> you're just, you're just you dumb there. twat. That doesn't come up otherwise. I guess another red shirt is cheaper than a spacesuit. Probably is too. Like, so this is a little dialogue puzzle. We have to say the right dialogue things to make friends with this archaeologist, uh, and then he will yeah. let us go down into his dig. So you gotta like, okay, help me out. Go down my hole and look. Yeah, let's look at some stuff. Okie dokie, go Jim Redshirt. Dun, dun, dun. I think his name's John. Oh, okay. Is there an award for scanning everything? Does this does this have like trophies and achievements? 
Not really. Oh. But there's like a completion percentage at the end. Mm. And your num- so um, got like a little bit of a... Um, number of things you scan goes towards Metroid that. Prime thing going on. So this is a weird puzzle. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. What this is a weird puzzle somewhat reminiscent of The Dig. That game was hard. Yeah. So we got these three statues with these like weird geometric yeah, shapes on them. What the? We go into the cave labyrinth and we find crystals that correspond to the geometric shapes we saw earlier. That looks safe. There's some scary eyes. If we walked into the scary eyes cave, we would die. We don't want to do that. How many of these things do we need? Well, since you ask, we need two green ones, three blue ones, and five red ones. How are we supposed to figure that out? Well, well, I'll explain as we go. This is the mysterious uh-huh. music. And uh, by lucky chance, we now have exactly two, exactly three, and exactly five. And that was entirely random. Uh, why, things, why do you need that many? These things just spawn randomly. Well, Can you have too many? Um, yeah. So you have to have a specific amount. Well, that's no, that well, not, in right. your, not in your inventory. Oh, okay. Yeah. But you have to use a specific amount. Yeah, well, that makes sense. Okay. Oh, so you have to put two green ones in the left pillar, three blue ones in the central pillar, and five red ones in the pillar on the right. And you establish that by examining the shape in the middle and mm-hmm. realize that it is two by three by five in proportions. And also the moment you uh, insert too many of one shape, then there's a big like error sound. So you know at what point to stop. Okay. So you can like sort of brute force your way through it. And yeah, I never and it doesn't got matter that proportion what, thing. And it doesn't matter what order you put the shapes into the into the pillars. Okay, you so put yeah, the red, you can just bumble through. You could put the red ones in first and then the green ones. Just as long as you put two in that one, three in that one, and five in that one. And then put no more. Or oh, you will die. Well, you won't die. You'll just have to start again. Oh, oh. Ooh, a secret passage. And Congratulations, you, you found an arbitrary amount of things that we had just sort of strewn. Ooh. Oh, it's another think tank. Oh. <laughs> yeah, he had to die so we could continue with the plot. Invisible hole with his pants off. <laughs> Comes through, turns <laughs> That's the power That's a off. marvellous sentence. Hello, invisible hole to save the day. Take off my pants so you can't see it. So, yeah, the first thing tank was just the most recent one. Holy crap, they've been at this for a while. Yeah, they've been there. As Dan is saying, the one in Thermos was probably new and was still recruiting. Who knows how long this one's been here. They kind of like the Ori from um, Stargate. If you say so. Hello, are the Ori. I haven't I watched like the that Ori shit. Arc. I know a bunch of people who really like Stargate and don't like it, but I thought the earlier seasons were a bit boring. Yeah, a honest. conspicuous empty spot because we're using who the goes same in there? because we're using the same background as last time, and I couldn't be bothered to put something else in there. <laughs> couldn't, couldn't make one extra little bit of graphic. So there's more of the mysterious equation. Okay. He's in this think tank. So Dan's going to uh, continue absorbing it. So basically we're building to the point where I can go like Super Saiyan 4 on maths we're building and just to... head fuck those faces back to their dimension of origin. Well, sort of. We're basically... Yeah, right, um, I completely picked it. We're basically storing the entire equation in our heads even though we ourselves do not know what it does or how to use it. You are the navigator. We're just storing it. Just like a like a calculator, storing or, it in our mighty brain, or essentially our mighty a big data USB. validating brain. Yeah, that's what it is. We're a USB. Essentially, this is a game about data validation saving the universe. <laughs> My head might explode. Then no, Bing. <laughs> oh, Hall. Bit that's, late for that. Now that's... you didn't want the gig. You didn't want the gig, Hall. Yeah, classic Hall. <laughs> Because you're just jerks. Yeah, and how long is it going to stay that way, you butt plug? Yeah, exactly. So, you know, they probably said that once and didn't do anything, and now fucking floating faces are everywhere. Oh no, it's just because we're so moral. <laughs> it's wrong! I like this tune. 
Oh. Oh. Robert Blank. Oh, he now dis- he's dead. He discovered the think tanks and the extra noids dealt with him. Actually, this is more grander continuity because you know that shitty webcomic I made? Yeah. One of the characters, well, two of the characters in it were Robin Paul, sort of post Defender of the Universe. And one of the plots of the, one of the subplots of the case that came up in that that were never resolved was that Rob had amnesia and couldn't remember his days as Defender of the Universe. Um, this, this entire time you've been creating this little Yahtzee verse and yeah, you know, nobody's man. noticed. I think everyone should make their own creative universe. Yahtzee verse. Continuity is fun. Here's a badly drawn hand. Uh, not sli- bad. Slightly blurred to disguise the badly drawnness. Now let's hear some mysterious dialogue that will mean nothing to us presently. Equals. But what does it equals? What? Fucking numbers. Reveal to me your secrets or I'll punch you in your number faces. What could that have meant? I don't know. It's a riddle dripping in cipher. What are you up to, extra noids? Yeah. You have enough. Gablumble blur, commented Dan. <laughs> I'm going to put your hand in warm water and Does then that I'm work? piss on your face. I don't know. I've never tried it. I don't think it does. I think that's one of those urban myths. Yeah, it does it does feel like bullshit. I'd let someone try that on me just out of curiosity. So we are entering like the late stage of the game now. Okie dokie. So we've they've uh, now that we've been to two think tanks, we've adapted the scanners and detected three more throughout the universe. Oh, about time hole. There's one on Quorn, one on Warhol three, and one in the Choking Nebula. And one <sighs> and finding the last three think tanks is basically uh, the last like a uh, big goal for the pre-exploration segment of the game. Righty up. After that, it goes into like end game, yeah, linear plot end game stuff. Is the end a fight? Like, does the combat sort of play a larger role? Or? Well, there is a big fight, like uh, to, towards the end. I want to go, but to it's not like the final culmination thing. Uh. There's like a final mini game, which personally I think is one of the shitty, shittiest, <laughs> poorest, poorest excuses for mini games. I in this saved whole game. my shittiest mini game for last. Yeah, we know at what point we get bored with these projects, don't we? I, th- I like to think it's just I'm, push the button, push up. Okay, mini game complete. I like to think I'm better at uh, keeping my enthusiasm throughout the whole project these days. I think it's important that you take the breaks that you do, because you got to step back, let that lull pass, and then go back to it with a bit of energy. Well, yes. That's the reason I give to rationalize the how long consuming shadow is taking. <laughs> um, yeah. Take, yeah, all right. Okay, this is where we get... This is uh, the last place where we have a really big fight. Okay. Yeah, Hull's complaining that nobody's listening to him. Yeah, shut up, Hull, you fuck Hull. We'll sort this out. Shut up, Hole. <laughs> you just said that. I don't like Hole as a character name. <laughs> it's just so simple. Hole. Yeah. Uh, now you've jinxed it. Now we're gonna die. Yeah, yeah. nice work, you fucking pubes. A glitter crab. The uh. up, one of the upgraded forms of Sparkle Crab. But we tracked a beam, did so, uh, straight off the bat. So, fuck you, that's a head start of damage for me. Yeah, you're pretty fucked. That's a gold... Gl- Jesus. Yeah. You're dead, motherfucker. <laughs> oh, but wait. <laughs> Alright, that was funny. <laughs> this, is- this is like the toughest enemy in the game. Uh, and again, we're pretty over-leveled for it. <laughs> so, it's... Oh, that one, that one's taken yeah, more survived missiles. Yeah, all, survived all our missiles. And we lost 24 shields in one hit. Still killed it after the next mm. shot, but still, if we hadn't been overleveled, that would have been a nasty one. A giant pinball in a wrestling ring. Welcome if, to the universe. Because if we complete the bromide quests and unlock the cloaking device, we never have to do combat ever again. <laughs> Another well-designed system where you can just go into cloak and... Well, you know. You don't get, like, the benefits of having fights if you're cloaked. Yeah. Do you need them if you're just going to be cloaked, though? Can you, like, is there a way to not have to do that fight, for instance? Can you cloak? What happens if that happens? Then you, you don't have to fight those guys. Huh. But I reckon 
unlocking the cloaking device is an obscure enough I uh, suppose, thing yeah. to do. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Just, my eyebrows are yours now. So, uh, when I was recording this video, uh, I was recording it in a small, much smaller window, not full screen like it is now. And at this stage in the game, I could not see where Hole was for love nor money. We're full screen now, and if he's moving, like, there are times when, you know, against that kind of lower grey background, it's legitimately hard to see. Mm. Like there. Yes, Hole's pickpocketing all the pirates, because he's a roguish fellow. Alright, so what's he doing to pickpocket, like, I mean... I mean does this mean someone else can come through later and not get shot? No, he's just uh, looking for basically a key card or something. He's looking for the next think tank because we know it's in here somewhere. Well, yeah, but I figure we're looking for like a key card or something like. Yeah, because we passed we passed a green or a red doodad. I'm guessing those go places. Yes, there, we there was a computer panel we saw earlier that takes a card. Hmm. And yes, it's on that yeah, guy. Yeah. yeah. You, you take know, his gun, that's not an inventory item, but it's used in a mini game shortly. The shitty one I told you about. Looks like he's holding it. It's Am. Yeah. I cannot. Yep. Oh, there he yeah, is. That works. Where's he? Oh, on the other side. This is always, go, pixels. Yeah, off they go. There's always a part of the game where I forget what I'm supposed to do, but I figured it out eventually. I got some fucking Get Smart style doors going on. Yeah, there's some big two color doors. Is that the same computer? No. Okay. You're like going around a ring. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to... There's like four different colours. Uh, yeah, they correspond text. to the colours of the conduits on the floor below that we saw. I don't remember that. Oh, wait, yeah, yeah. Now I got it. Oh, okay, so you're going up and down the floors. All right. I knocked my mic there. Sorry, listeners. Oh, you fucking stooge. Oh, you did a thing. There's a beep. Okay, so we've got to go find the red computer now. Uh, No, now we've unlocked that big door we saw earlier. Yeah. Uh oh. Sound the alert! <laughs> no, you don't, hole. So here's the mini game. It's shit. What the idea was, you were supposed to wait for him to come out of cover and then fire. But it turns out you can just mash fire and then he dies. Should probably have gone back and redesigned that a bit, but I basically did no testing on this game. <laughs> what do you want? It was free. That was spaster balls. That old Does excuse. that happen again? Yeah, tons of times. So he just sneezes? Oh, okay, so it's, there's an alert. Bam. Huh. Yeah, it's a bit exploitable. Yes. Didn't you need, didn't you unlock the red? Didn't you do something to red? No, no, no. We unlocked the big security door. Oh, that's the right. The colored conduits and computers don't come into things just yet. Oh, okay. Oh. Your shit, younger me. Yeah, there should have been like a cooldown or something on that. And here's the next thing, tank. <coughs> Security. We jamming. And the crew yeah. get on board. Dan Poo and I prowls, saving the day. Woman in the bubble up there, chucking a wicked spread. Has she got an exposed nipple? Yep. Some fucking nips for you. Jacket to that. Yep. My brain's having a maths. Yep, we've got more more maths in our head and more mysterious dialogue. And the prince symbol tatted on the back of my hand. That's I'm the an prince symbol. I'm an ambisextrous space mathematician. That's the, that's the symbol of the neck erosions. That was what the high ones carved to lead us to the archaeological site. Skies. Feels like a few drama episode about the brains. Does it? A little bit, yeah. What does it equate to, Gabriel? Huh? What does it equate to? What? That was the question. Oh, I didn't see that. That was bit. just asked. I was thinking about the big giant. That was brains. the the enigmatic statement. Uh, what that does it equate the to? The enigma of the plot. Enigma, enigma, enigma. Pudding plus fork equals pie. Yeah, I was going to go shoehorn. Tasty. Delicious desserts. pie. I've been making pies lately. Have you? Yeah, apple pies, man. They're really good, really easy. We might as well talk about pies. Fuck yeah. Because well, nothing else happening. I have a mortar and pestle, so I've bought like cinnamon sticks and cloves and grind them up myself so it's all you fresh. You fucking pie hipster. <laughs> yeah. No, they're so, it's so rewarding because pies are delicious. And are now they? there's just pies. 
My pie is delicious. Uh, filthy man pie. I don't it's more know. of an eclair. You saying man pie just reminded me of the strangest thing. <laughs> Please tell me. Well, one time I was watching an episode of The X-Files with someone. And uh, it was about this weird guy who, like, uh, somehow teleported himself inside something and then climbed out of the guy in a really horrible, gory way. I and I guess we were kind of drunk because then we, like, when I, we said, oh, he's a man pie. The fat bloke must have eaten him in a pie. <laughs> and for the rest of the episode, we kept calling him the man pie and we all um, kept laughing. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny the things that come back to you. Yeah, no, I know that shit. Just so pop. we know that the uh, the think tank is in the middle of this bog. Well, okay, this will lead us to uh, the next Eric mini game. <laughs> hole. You, why does that keep? Well, because you just made a joke with it there. He said, "Hold, hold down the fort." Oh yeah, yeah sorry, hole. You do keep going on about the guy just, whose name is Hole. Well, I'm very tired, and the word Hole, both audibly and you know as it's written and just what it means, is just combined to make me giggle every goddamn time. It could mean so many different things other than orifices of the body. Well, yeah, honestly, it's not even the orifice of the body part that's making me laugh the most. It's just a funny one-syllable word for a name. I'm just Fine. Looks like a giant nipple. You're Look, on, a on. hole. You're There's on. a hole there now. A, what the fuck? This is an action-packed game. It's it's a maze in which we are pushed along the, the current of the underground river. Oh, we're in a river. Yeah, it's top down. I have no idea what the fuck's going on there. So we just got pushed into this natural cavern. Just Basically, like the jiggles. puzzle is we have to find a way to uh, get ourselves onto another stream of the river that will take us to the other area. That's okay. there. What's the metal bit for? You will see. Okay, so what do those mean? Like, what happens when I click? Like, what's going you're on? Not, well, you're not clicking. You're using the cursor keys. Oh, okay. Well, the, um... One of them means that the, the current is outflowing into this area. But the other means the current is inflowing into this area. Okay, okay. Uh, I think we all took a wrong turning there. Because, yeah, I just saw that, and when it's all dark, I have no fucking clue what the fuck is going on. You tend to get stuck in sort of junction points in this game. It makes sense. It's like Eddie's in the current. Yeah, I, I I can see what it's meant to be now. Just when it first did something, I was... Oh, that's where we were before. Yep, try again, me. <laughs> me from last night. Fucking... I think I would have been mm, knackered by this point. Noob can't play your own game. I think I started recording this at like... Didn't we complain exactly about a thing that was exactly like this for the John Glames game? We sure did. But you I think, fucking... Well, this is established <laughs> as a minigame fulfilled game, and we don't, like, get killed arbitrarily. We just start again. You've gone to the same place three times. I mean, I'm not defending myself, Potato. although I am, obviously. <laughs> I'm not defending myself, but, I, but here's why the decisions I made are perfectly valid. But this is not in the ballpark of Operation Stealth. Those were some... That was some horrendous design. I suppose it's just because you've gone to the same thing three times in a row that I'm kind of... Yeah, that's, that was my... That was me being dumb. <laughs> See, the current pushes you to things. You have to act fast. Uh, is this correct? Yes, I think it Hooray! is. Yay! Thank you, Jesus. So we needed to be here so we could pick up some chalk. Hmm. Job done. Yep, the neck erosions, there's that name again. Oh, the necromongers from um, the Chronicles of Riddick. No, no, it's nothing like that at all. It's entirely legally separate. What's well, it before Chronicles of Riddick, wasn't it? Uh... Go, little poo, swim might, through the sewers. Might not have been, actually. When was Chronicles of Riddick? I don't, I don't know. No. Oh, yeah, okay. so we use chalk on this little panel by the door. What, what would give, What we're oh, supposed okay, to do is draw the symbols depicted in the bottom right there, using the the uh, fixed lines provided, in classic Zach McCracken style -y. How do you pick, like, what you the just, lines are going to be? Well, you just click on an area that seems to be a hotspot. Okay. All right. So it's just click a line around. there. Yeah, so we draw the square, that's the second symbol. And the final symbol is the diamond with the horizontal line. Boop, boop. 
Do you think you'd have figured this out? The interaction point's a little bit fidgety and weird. But... And there we go. Think tank number four. Oh no! Well, Eric isn't a red shirt and has the smiles to get out of the way of the gun. <laughs> I suppose he's also a small target. And he's also a character with a name. <laughs> with a name that I care about. Yeah. And not a filthy red shirt. Do you care about him? Do you care about this ensemble of characters we've created? Yeah, I've actually gotten to know them a little bit over this time. Well, you can't help but get to know them in the sheer amount of time <laughs> yeah, and grind we've had to deal with them. Adventurer. Close your legs, madam. Cover that nipple. So which is your favourite member of the elaborate gesture crew? Um, well, it depends. Cause I like some more for the concept than I do how the character is sort of executed than I like others for the character. So character-wise, I probably like Eric. Um, for just design and weirdness, Hull. Okay, then. I just like... The idea of just eyebrows floating around just makes me giggle. I can tell. It made me giggle, too. That's why I based the whole character around it. When I was, like, writing him, I got the idea that he'd be really sort of sensitive about it. Like, before he joined the crew, he had a history of suing people for discrimination. <laughs> like a, you know, like a social justice type. I want my safe space. Every single time I was saying... <laughs> You're discriminating against me because I'm invisible except for my eyebrows, aren't you? Well, I'm scary. Safe space. So apparently the guy at Grimbus University who was trying to decode the equation has also gone missing. Oh my god. That, that, you, this scene happens after you get all but one think tank. So now we just have to get the last one and then we're locked into... I'm waiting class. for a... What's his name from the last game? We're reaching the end of Free Rome. Ooh. Eventually. I think I'm just going to get the last couple of database entries. Is there going to be like a triumphant Rob Blank zipping in to save the day section? No. That's a tragedy for me. Ah, oh, that's right. He got absorbed into that comic you were doing. Yeah. And now and he's... The rich, and, the rich expanse and of the that has, Since that comic has been thoroughly disowned, <laughs> he's essentially been absorbed by vacuum. He I is think, nothing yeah, now. The, the game that, that, that spawned him and the comic that harbored him have now been yes. cast, to the sp cast, cast to the space. Yes. Might as well. Yeah, so this game was written so that, um, you know, like a... Like I like to do, it acknowledges continuity without, like, needing familiarity with it. A little bit like um, Mad Max. So if you have like uh, played it, then there's a nice little bonus. But if you haven't, then you don't feel totally alienated. No pun intended. Yeah, I think gentle continuity works best like that. Alienated. Because uh, 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 huh. uh, uh, uh. there's aliens. <sighs> I could do it. A nice hot the meal, Yahtzee I think. The Yeah, so could I. Oh, what the fuck? It's another upgraded form of New crab. sparkle crab. Oh, it's gone. That Still was... no match for us. <laughs> oh, it's a jingle crab. It's a jingle crab. I think oh. it goes sparkle crab, then glitter crabs, then jingle crabs, then the queen of crabs. Oh, okay. Are we going to find another queen, or is that just one off? Oh, yeah. here's the upgraded uh, Why are we fighting so trader. many things? What's going on? This is a grouchy trader. Well, the um, whether or not you get attacked by random encounters is basically entirely random. So, you just so sometimes patch. you might get all the way across the lifeless zone without getting hit by shit. Sometimes you might get hit like three times in one warp jump. You right. just don't know in That's this cynical pretty, universe. Pretty, pretty stiff blow to get hit by three. Well, yes. You gotta right. be, that's why you got to be careful. And right. Save early, save often. Let grind money and upgrade your fucking ship, people. That's, I think, the some, obvious lesson to take away from this. Some people like that sort of gameplay. I'm not defending the sheer amount of grind. I yeah, think there's, I think a, there's a lot. For me. There's a lot about this game I would do differently. That's sort of what makes you want to make another game like this. But uh, I've already got like five other projects in the <laughs> game right now. <laughs> if I did, it would almost certainly be an iOS thing. Yeah, do it for mobile. Put it something, on Android as well. So yeah, something fun it. you could just pull out and do on the bus for a bit. Hey, you know, the trading element as hey, well. Hey, we got a 30-second bus ride. Let's sell some bacon burgers to someone. Yeah, fuck yeah. Bacon more, burgers and porno. More Greater Culthorps. Boom. Enjoy Boom. this. These are the last couple of fights we'll ever see. <laughs> it's funny, like, just how brief the fights are because you've just got a souped-up ship and we're kind of skipping through. It's like, <laughs> fuck you. I like a brief turn-based fight. 
it's kind of... Oh, got eight tons of porno. Or whatever the fuck. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> fuck you, Colthorpe. Go away. See, that's what happens when the tractor fails. He gets a free shot on us. Yeah. Ooh, ooh, he's hurting us. See? If we'd, like, encountered, like, six Colthorpe, he'd have just whittled us down. Hmm. I hate the attrition loss. Like, I don't mind going down to a big enemy, but I fucking hate it. I'm just, like, slowly crawling through something and so once we be down, be down to this planet we'll eventually find the last think tank and then get locked into the plot Aye. so we might as well read through the database while we got the oh, chance oh goody so <sighs> uh, yeah just pause to read if you want to read all these things we're going to go through all of them in the meantime we'll just emit noise from our mouths just sit here and suck on my teeth I'm going to. Oh, that's got boring. I'm going to fart into my hands. <laughs> okay, so you mentioned Beyond Consuming Shadow and the Zero Punctuation game. What else have you got going on? Is that it? Or are there some other ideas floating about in the ether there? Oh, I got How it. long do we can play some of these goddamn things? Um, what? How long do we can start playing some of these goddamn things? Mm, uh, maybe sooner than you think. Ooh. Don't want to commit myself too much. Mm. I made a game, uh, like a concept game, that I might develop about um, a s sort of like this, but uh, with like platform elements, where you have to go down to planets and uh, kidnap people to act as part of your spaceship crew. <laughs> oh wait, yeah, see that? I, Did I show you that? Yeah, that's that's what I keep talking about when I say you had a little space thing. Yeah. And then thing. you look at me like I'm some kind of weirdo. Um, I'm thinking I'd quite like to make um, something along the lines of which is own mythos games again. Like a story told in a closed environment over a series of days that develops over time. I'd like, like to see a more with, refined and you know, mature you take that on again. Just not with shitty inventory puzzles like what adventure games have to have. I thought of doing something like that but with more investigative gameplay maybe. Yeah. I, like, I think the world needs some decent investigation games. What else? I still think a game like a sort of action RPG game where you level backwards is a thing that would work, <laughs> and I'd like to try that sometime. Like a well, you start off with all the abilities and spells, and then over time you have to decide which ones to get rid of. So, like the bosses explode and strip you of yeah some sort of ability. Pyrrhic victories. It makes more sense from a storytelling perspective to be at your lowest point just before the denouement. <laughs> The last boss is just this weird little kid. 101. Yeah, the last boss is like a weird little kid. You just go to like, it. Uh, he's, you slap five times. Uh. So I put in like a voice of the book for one with this. Uh, very little. What else are you doing these cool days? Yeah. It is probably the blah, 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 blah. Not even known to be invited to the rowdiest of parties. <laughs> Frumius Prime is where, where Dirty Laura's is. The uh, technocratic place. Rule 34, Dirty Laura. You can do it. Huh. Uh, Dirty Laura has big tits. And that's just instructions for the <laughs> that's fan just, people. That's just... That's... No fucking A cups on Dirty Laura. No. Good. Get, get it right. She's a busty lass. Big Rat 3, of course, was the planet where Bernard Tosbot and Paul Grewald came from. Slovak 6 was where we found all them fish. Salty Slovaks. And in this database entry, we will learn that the fish are called Kissy Fish and the sharks are called Lone Sharks, but spelled <laughs> differently. Kissy Fish and Lone Sharks. <sighs> yep. Bergman Prime is the restaurant planet. Uh, because the restaurants are so nice, the cold thought leave it alone. Apparently. Well, you gotta eat somewhere, goddammit. Well, uh, I think that's the point. Fuck off. Yep. Ha <laughs> ha! Yeah, this is me establishing more of my private universe. What games? Oh, yeah, that's right. That was a reference to a game that I never actually finished or released. 12 minutes of pantsuit. Well. Uh, yes. 
I also was making like a space life simulator game called Poseidon 12. And I was like, oh, Jesus, this keeps going. There. Yeah, last page now. Uh, We're done the people and the places. Now it's just the misks. And the rest. <laughs> That's probably say like into space, you know, into like a travel would just be like bip, and you're like, oh, I was expecting like well, a yes. fucking thing. Well, that's, that's how I think it would be. It's gonna be, it's gonna look rad, and the stars are gonna stretch. I mean, the star and... Enterprise probably won't warp by stretching and disappearing into the distance with a big flash of light. It'll probably just be there one minute and then bip, gone. You're back to the audible yawning, aren't you? To be fair, yes. Okay, I guess it was <laughs> fair at, enough for this bit. Yeah, look at what we're doing here. This is an info dump. Fine, I'll yawn too. <sighs> Get it out of our system. <sighs> so that database entry established that before, <sighs> before Rob and Paul returned to the Riemann time drive, they covered it in dinosaur stickers. <laughs> yes, you wouldn't have known that if you hadn't got, well, gone to the database. This is why this is important. Why is it so important? Well, why this you one feature was music. this one feature was singled out for particular praise by Home of the Underdogs. They're right. saying it's fun to read all the funny descriptions and learn more about the universe of the game. Did this get released like before other games did that or something? Mm-hmm. Well, Ooh, you know, I think thing. I think their point was that it made it to stand out amongst amateur adventure games, yeah. amongst all the other things it does. Far enough. Schrodinger's crab. Ah. Yes, that's how the anomalous thingy came into existence. Because it exists and both not exists. And here we and are day, on... you confusing creature. Here we are on the planet Warhol 3. Okay. Let's go, ready. What kills you on this? I can't remember. I don't think we'll ever find out. Oh, life's unfair. Hey, what? <laughs> that makes me chuckle. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. Both of these guys can take you down to a sunken city where the where the uh, Necurosian ruins are and where the last think tank is. Mm-hmm. The guy on the right charges 3,000. The guy on the left, though, can't take you because he doesn't have a license. So, But if you solve the puzzle that lets him have a license, he'll take you for free. What's the puzzle? You will see. Oh, so we're doing the puzzle. Yes, we're oh, okay. doing the puzzle. thought we were just going to go fuck it and take terrifying smile faces. He's got goat eyes. Yeah, octopus eyes, really. Like Jim from Mog World. I saw a special needs girl throw a goat on Friday. What? Was was that like a Mad Lib? No, no, that's a real thing that's One happened day, in my life. One day, a noun, special needs girl, hefted it verb, like a hefted, threw it like a fucking duffel bag. A noun goat. <laughs> yeah, like a duffel bag. Just clasped two hands on the top of it and just lifted it and just projected it about a meter and a half. And then there was a big long explanation about living, not living, and how we use gentle hands. Right. That's something I didn't know about special schools is that one of the big things is like getting the living, not living explanation down. So there are just pictures everywhere and it'll have living or not living under it because it's to constantly teach the kids about living, not living. But all the photographs would themselves be not living. Yeah, That's I, I, don't know if I, I, I don't know if they get that deep into the uh, in, into it. So now there was just a picture of a retarded kid and one and it had just living or not living under it. And that was one of the first things I saw at that school and that wigged me out. I had no idea what that was about. So how we get a license is we ask this guy for his, but uh, we can't just give it to him because he won't let He's us. He's right there. Yeah. So instead we scan the license. And uh, the boys back home can make a copy. Oh, very clever. What a cunning <laughs> stratagem. <laughs> Who's checking the licenses here? Uh, we won't read those database entries because we can never go back to the ship. But Is it's it nice. possible to read them? Not at this point, no. Well, I suppose we could kill ourselves and go back to the ship, but uh, we're going to just finish the game. Far enough. Thank you, old fruit. Uh, here's a weird sort of insight into the Red Shirt's character. Why did you do me this favour? Because I get killed instead of other people for a living. 
Good point. Yeah. He's just a help unit. Yeah. He's he might as well spread a little joy through the universe as he goes. Tours. Deluxe tours. So he can know at least go to his inevitable grave, yeah. knowing that he made life a little brighter for at least one person. And here we are in the undersea ruins. Like how sitting in the same way. Now this is important. The water in this well has miraculous life giving qualities. We found this bucket on Quorn 8. It was just lying there next to the bog. If we hadn't got it, we would have had to go there and get it. So it was a mandatory? Yes. There's a hole in the... <laughs> he does it with his wang, yes. <laughs> I never really noticed that before. But he turns the handle with a single thrust of his mighty hips. Okay, he didn't get the bucket. No. Well, no. the bucket stays where it is. No. So the Nicurosians were really big on geometry and mathematics. That's important. Fair enough. Ooh, a switch. And another hidden passage. But there's laser beams, Lasers. ancient laser beams, and a palm reader. But we, our palm will not get rid of the laser beams. Yeah. Are we going to steal a corpse's palm again, like always? So when I designed this background, I forgot to take the GUI into account. The what? So the graphical user interface, the yeah. HUD. So that thing you need to activate is just partially concealed by it. That is, yeah, that's three, that's three squares. Yes. There's a little red button on the plaque. And a corpse jumps ah. out. A mummified corpse jumps out of the box. We steal its hand. But it's desiccated and dead. Whatever, So we can't use it to re get the palm reader to read it. Whatever shall we do? Mm -hmm. Let's feed it to the fucking fisherman. See, this is why I hate inventory puzzles now. It's just... All these no's. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that's the problem with point-and-click adventure games generally is the problems have to be fucking ridiculous otherwise they're just instantly solvable well yes and flick those hips and <laughs> again. there we have a fucking wiggling hand there's a fresh pink okay. severed hand in it i suppose the red shirts aren't gonna be squeamish well no i mean they're born they, to die they're only barely sentient nothing matters my life is forfeit. Yep. And I think this will be near enough to hit the very last action of his life. Oh. Throw. Except you are. You fucking weird little... Godspeed, little red shirt. Fiddlesticks. You made life a little better for Salty Joe. Oh, fondle shafts. You made a difference. Some red shirts just went and got some salvage from a planet. <laughs> yeah. And then died. And then died. There's someone in the pod now. Ooh. Ooh. What's that business? It's the Riemann Professor who disappeared earlier. Mm. Remember how we talked about, I called the guys Riemanns as a reference to the Romulans from Star Trek? Yeah. But then Star Trek had Riemanns as well. <laughs> yeah. They gave you a Riemann. Okay. Now we've taken the whole equation. All right. Oop. Uh oh, spaghettios. <laughs> Fallon. Yes. Hole never really got attached to us, it seems. Now the extra noids have had enough of our shit. Yeah. They they are prepared to negotiate for its return. So Daniel's gonna interrogate them to find out what it does and why they want it. This will be a long conversation. Yes, mathematics has the power to shape the universe. It's to make my willy bigger. They don't have a willy. Yes, He's they a do. Zordon. It's just small. You can't see it. Ah. Meanwhile, 40,000 years ago... I'm going to turn the lights on. Excuse me. <laughs> it's getting dark. Everything's scary. Jero, Jero Necron. Jero Necron. Ah, I can see this guy in King George Square on Saturdays. Yeah, your teaching suck, you fucking dickbag. Oh. 
Okay, so we're on the Simpsons planet. Yahtzee's clicking around and exploring. Ooh. Yes, I would like another chocolate strawberry. Ooh. Ooh, chocolate strawberries. I'm gonna make stick soup. Yeah, child, you and your fucking numbers, weird little autistic. Yeah, he's just running on the wall. So, how well do you know your maths, Gabe? Because there's a maths puzzle coming up. Um, is it one of those maths puzzles that's based on a concept around mathematics that gets bounced about in pop culture an awful lot? or is Which it of these moment? statements is true? No idea. It was that one. I know someone who knows pi to an awful lot. Well, I happen to know pi to ten decimal places. Ooh. So I worked it into this game. My god. Maths! My god, the equation shaped the universe. Tathagata Buddha, the Father Buddha said, With our thoughts we make the world. There you go, kids. Maths is magical. This is why we study. Yeah, stay in school. Fuck yeah. Not if you want to be a writer like me, though, because I left school and I'm doing fine. Yeah. Ditch school. Get rich yeah. on the internet. That's how it works these days. Your mum doesn't know shit. It's fine. Yeah, just post videos of uh, popular indie games <laughs> and then set up a page for Patreon. Yeah. It's the future. Ding, ding, ding. ding, so, ding. Yeah. You got, everyone's getting money. You Inspired get the money. by a dream, that weird autistic kid discovered that he could use a mathematical equation to cause the weather to change. So, the extra noughts, um, who are big multidimensional things, need a maths thing from this dimension. Well, we'll see. This was like 40,000 years ago. Oh, we'll okay. So, after many thousands of years, 200 years before the present, we're establishing... Yes. The Nick Erosians are now, like, enlightened and rich and stuff. Highly advanced. Huckle Orchestrator. Yep. The music of the spears. Yeah, this is all getting a bit loomy now. I started playing that again the other night and forgot that you had to write down the things yourself. Uh. <laughs> yeah, I was like, <coughs> just like, oh, I'll be fine. How how far into the game did you get? Oh, like you like five that? minutes, and it's just I forgot how to open shit or something. Like, oh. C yeah. A D. That's the open spell. Don't you know Lawn anything? Long green. Doodly doodly doodly. Right. So um. Establishing that conversation, there's uh, some new guy has uh, taken the job of entering the equation for yeah. the harvest season for this year. I get some explanation of these weird symbols we've been seeing throughout the game, representing the Kurosian culture. Thought they were just really into PlayStation. A lot of that equation was copy pasted. Is it obvious? <laughs> yeah. So this civilization now like inscribes a really massively complicated equation every year, so that the good rains come and water their crops. Hmm. And they've been doing that for thousands of years, and uh, the person inscribing it is an inexperienced Necron. We're establishing here, who is a bit immodest. <laughs> he's a he's a He's an overconfident, brash youth. Yeah. Although he wrecked three these... police cars riding this fucking equation. Although everyone in this species is also holy and weird and got the personality of a fish. Hello. Kind of like in Harry Krishnas. In that Krishnas. case, I am grateful, Necron Veroth. Harry Krishnas. Alright, so that kid's gonna fuck up. So now we have to go to the chalk mine to get some chalk. 
probably ways you could simplify this society a little, but okay, you got your rituals. I don't know. What the fuck? It's a mini game in this flashback, why not? <sighs> yeah, what does it equate to is basically just a neck erosion rhet rhetorical question. Like, what the fuck? Yeah, it's uh, basically the same as what's all this then? <laughs> Launch! Chalkworms. So we've got these three catapults, but every time we launch one at the chalkworm, he gets out of the way. Ooh, tricky devil. Okay, are those things in the background going to be used? Ooh, yep, alright. So we knock a rock onto that minecart, and it will and stop... And he goes after the will, chalk. It will stop him going into the left position, so it restricts his movement. So it makes... So eventually, if we keep... Uh, Doing this, eventually he'll be hit by one of these rods. Yeah, I'm gonna get you. Not this one though. Faster, faster, I say. Yeah, I think I figured out to do it the other way around now. There oh. we go. Dumb oh. worm. Ha! Know your place. Oh. Head hurt. A little calm and mathematical logic was all that was necessary, my friend. Yeah, and catapults. I have no penis. I'm smooth around the bend. Many thanks. May the equations be balanced. <laughs> now, here's a plot hole I noticed every while science, I was recording. Every enlightened science fiction culture. Here's a plot hole I noticed while I was recording this last night. Mm -hmm. But uh, in this flashback, we established that the Necurosians had yellow skin. Yep. But recently, in those ruins, the hand we used to open the uh, palm was gate pink. was pink when, when we restored it. Uh, maybe they were like a mutant. No. Maybe, maybe this is like a... a no, I was just paint. wrong and bad and foolish and I should be killed. <laughs> well, it seems fine. Yeah, yeah, I'm not going to bother really checking it detail. Yeah, that's a thunderstorm. That's normal. Oh. That bit's not. That's not normal. You fucked up. You yeah. fucked up. Now our whole society's dead. You, you fucked, up. fucked up. You killed us all. Necron Belial. God, classic Belial, man. Never you, checks his uh, shit. Are you happy now? May your equations fuck up. Yeah. God, just, everybody, it was Belial. May you never carry the one. <laughs> May you be stuck with Roman numerals. And now some stuff we didn't animate. Lightning so, storms. Yeah, so after that, the surface of the planet was getting ravaged by storms forever, and the Necurosians... Huddled in the ca huddled in caverns for like two hundred years. Well, one and one hundred and fifty years. Now, because history runs in cycles. Yep. Everyone's gone back to the old ways. All it takes is a bit of hardship, doesn't it? Society is just two, three meals from anarchy. Who was it who said that? Lenin or Marx. Yeah, so there's no one alive today who remembers the uh, ah. their glorious prior existence. Dingbats. And they've been trying to inscribe the equation that will fix all this in all this time, but if people are getting impatient. And stupider. Yeah, that's what happens when you don't do your maths, kids. Stay yeah, in school. see? You think the lesson is here. YouTube yeah. is a false prophet. People have gotten all credulous and shit. Incredulous, rather. I think. Impossible. Way. Yes, now we're Necron Caleb. Caleb. That's a good hillbilly name. No, he's one of the last of the priests. And the last person who can work out them the fancy squiggles. Yes, of course. Before they're all broken up for firewood. <laughs> we're gonna eat the chalk. Fuck you. Does chalk burn? I don't think so. No. Nah. I guess it wouldn't. So are these the faces that are poking through from the other dimension? What? <clears throat> oh, well. Is this happening now? Is this happening like... No, this happened like 50 years ago. Oh, okay. Why, why must you wait to make sure this equation is perfect? Did no one come back to like help them? It was like, hey, where'd the Necrosians go? Apparently not. Ah, the surface fuck those was, guys, because they're a bunch of weird nerds. Well, they established the surface was covered in storms, so I guess there was no way to access them. They were all cut off. 
boop. So that was another math joke that was sort of a callback to the first one. We had to supply the tenth digit of pi. Google it. Da, 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 da. Whoops, Necron Caleb's noticed a mistake. This is what happens. Fucking numbers. This is like Logopolis. Yeah. I actually like Logopolis. Numbers, man, reshaping the universe. Boom. Bam! You fucked up, Neck Erosions. Now your planet's an asteroid belt that we visited earlier. Huh. Yeah, Aww. so it's established in this game now. Yeah, yeah, the extra noids are the Neck Erosions. Uh, the equation also caused them to transcend physical form. Yeah, so Dr. Dab Diablo was exiled to the other universe we saw him in in Rob Blank 3 because he was blamed for this incident. That's why he was so bitter, I suppose. Yeah, that's not his fault. We want to come back to the universe, please. Or do they? We're going to math some shit. Yeah. Yeah. Explain to this wordy man. Yeah, Jesus, this has been a long cutscene. Yeah, it's going to keep going. Oh, good. Okay. How long? I mean, it's still like 20 minutes before the end, and it's like all cutscene, pretty much. Oh, God! Well, it's not all cutscene. Oh, my ass! What does the final equation do? Well, titties, <laughs> titties. Yes, we want a nice big pair of paps. <laughs> oh God, this is a very uh, long conversation. This in should retrospect. have been spread throughout the game. This could have been happening at the end when you got bits of the equation. What? Oh shit, we're in control again. Oh, and we're in a waiting room. Being John Malkovich. We're in a waiting room full of versions of us, whose names are all the uh, anagrams of our name. Yeah, oh, magazines. You must be the strangest of the Dans. What? Did you just sit on somebody else? What? So that was the extra noise trying to explain to you what their existence is like. Okay. Yes, Jesus, boring. That's the word. Thank yes, you. Yes, Jesus Christ. We haven't got any willies. <laughs> this was really boring millions of years ago. Yeah, they're so evolved. They've uh, solved all the problems of the universe, and uh, now they can't die, and they've got nothing more to do. Yeah. Immortality. That's immortality for you. A hand job. Just a quick rattle off. No. Something to clear the cobwebs. The final equation is designed to erase the five dimensional life forms from the universe. That is its purpose. All right. Well, off you go then. Bye. Yeah, seems fair enough. Yeah. Here you go. Why didn't you just say that? We all thought you were trying to take over our universe. Yeah. yeah I thought you, you know, if you just said we're building a giant euthanasia machine, I'd be like, oh, all right. Well, I needed all the guys in the think tanks to put the equation together. It seems. So, yeah, this is where the four consoles on this station come into play again. Oh, we're actually doing stuff. Do we have to hide from people and play the shooty game? No, no. We're here with the extra noise blessing now, remember? Yeah, that's where the cunt thorps are gone. Yeah. Doodly doodly doo. Doodly doodly doo. Headbutt. One! Alright, so this is just perfunctory, really. Yes! Two. Ah, ah, ah. I wasn't finished yet. I was going to make that joke when we'd done all four. Yeah, but he laughed God. after every count. God damn you. <laughs> Three equation segments. He didn't always laugh after every single count. Pretty sure he did. He'd laugh after the last one, I think. Four equation segments. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Sorry, that's the count being sucked off. Reminds me of that thing where someone's taken just one of the Count's songs and just censored the word Count. Oh, dear hey. God, it's magical. Hey, we've been teleported back. Oh, 
So what's a pinball again? Yeah, I've just been hanging out with the extra noids. Yeah. They seem like cool guys. Ooh, is this a choice now? Well, it's uh, the plot thickening. Their business is to destroy the universe. So will they destroy the universe to die? What did they tell you the equation is for? Doodles. They said it would destroy the extranoids. And what did the professor say the equation was for? They said it would destroy the universe. Ah. Yeah. Destroy the entire universe except the extranoids. That's just weird. Now it's nothing but faces making out. You wouldn't think you'd need a complex equation to do that. It's just like, if control A, select all, control X. I mean, if you're already giant floating energy faces, are really that big, like... Okay, now i got to go back and get all those equation parts back. Okay, so they fibbed. We were tricked, we were duped. Fucking uh, can't trust any five-dimensional life forms these days. I mean, they're powerful enough to kill, like, fucking Cloaky McDude, like... How do they relate to this? What? The dude in the coat. The red coat dude. Oh, Powerful. yeah. The high ones. Yeah. Well, I think the extra noids could impose their will upon them because the high ones were also sort of non corporeal life forms. Yeah, okie dokie. Okay, Hull has to activate a conduit before we can use the machine. I have to do it within a time limit. My god. That's the puzzle this, this time. And if the and Hull has to shoot Colthorpe all the time, again like the last time, and if that mini game had been halfway decent, this might have been a tense uh, segment. Oh well, and we make. Is. Why do we fail, Mr. Wayne? <laughs> so that we can pick ourselves up again. <laughs> Character switching puzzles. Green. Except a completely facile one. Yep. Green. Green for go. I've downloaded your brain. So there was no, like, counter-argument. It was just like, no, the professor was right. These guys are dicks. Well, I guess, uh... Who's that? I guess we don't really... Uh, oh, it's his clothes. I guess we better err on the side of caution, get this equation back, and then get everyone around a table and figure out where the <laughs> fuck we are. Okay, we need, a, we need to have a sensible conversation about this, because um, we live in the universe. Yeah. Perhaps we could negotiate. Yeah, like... Really necessary. Whoa, did you just get shot or something? Yeah, Hull got shot once there, but he needs to be shot a few times to fail. Yep, last one. Dun, 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 dun. Oh no, Dan was shot. My god. But he's already got the thing. I love how they're just driving around in the catatonic wood. Yes, he's just enjoying the show. Yeah. <laughs> so now we're back here. And it's time for the last puzzle in the game. Hey, that, does that painting look familiar? Huh. Haha. -ha. There's no reference like self reference. <laughs> yeah. I'm clever. Me. Me. Oh, but I am. So yes, there's a blank ticket, it's all like metaphor and shit. And if we talk to the Daniel Gordons, they all say a different line that Dan had diff earlier in the game. <laughs> Not that one though. He's, yeah, he's got shit to do. And also the talkie sprites for the clone Daniels are um, flipped left to right from Dan's uh, talkie sprite. Aww. That's so uh, you know. So when Dan at the desk cleans his glasses... You can nip behind and uh, pour black paint into this printer. I'm going to have to wait for him to clean his glasses again, I'm afraid. 
Jimmy can't fart some poo particles onto his face and cause him to run out of the room and clean his glasses for an extended period of time. Note the wall clock with no hands. Yeah, I noticed that. So this is a representation of ennui. A visual representation of ennui. Just sitting around, waiting, getting kind of bored. See, this was me forgetting you need to close the printer again before uh, it will start printing actual numbers. When you're ready, yes, thank you. Clean those smudgy specks. Bip. Oh. Right. Now we've got ticket 18. Ah, uh, fuck you others. So now we're going to fucking save right now for a very important reason. And now to sit back and enjoy a big long cutscene. Yeah. Oh yeah, look who's tough talking now. Look who's a big man we're pulling up his big man trousers. I got my big boy pants on and I'm taking my balls out for a spin. But we did not bring you here this time. Because he's what? dead. He's been, he was killed by a pirate. Yep. See, the extranoids weren't just the neck erosions. It's everybody who dies? Yes, the extranoids are everybody who's died. Huh. Yes, thank you for establishing that after we did, game. Ah, oh, Daniel, you're stupid. There was a clue to this earlier in the game where the High Ones mentioned that the extranoids have been growing in power since the beginning of the universe. Because everything, every sentient being that has died has joined their numbers. Now they're just hovering around like a bunch of jerks. Yes, and now they want to destroy the universe. So, and they want to destroy the universe yeah, so that... getting if, some fucking end of Evangelion shit going on. They want to destroy the universe so that everyone else can tr transcend four-dimensional space. Oh, so they're helping everyone migrate. Yes. Oh, all right. See, they, they dwell in a beautiful plane of existence. Where we have all sorts of genitals. It's wonderful. You see, all along, the great secret of life is that our corporeal existence is just a period of adjustment where we learn, um, yeah, as we're saying here, the transitionary phase where we learn wisdom and patience before we can evolve ever further with death. You see, now you know the meaning of life. I hope I hope, hope there it you was go. hope it was worth it. I wasn't kidding when I said this was epic. You must become the Buddha. Oh wake up, Dan. Yeah, you fucking spaznut. You know, we changed our mind. We're rejecting you. Everyone else gets to evolve, you stay here. No, Dan's gonna extranoid up now. Do you remember the start of the game when we looked in the sky and saw an extranoid? Yep. Next to the house. Oh, it was him looking at it himself. It was ourself looking back at ourself. My mind. Because we exist outside of linear time. We're like um, the the watcher call it's from Slaughterhouse Five. Uh, Tramfamadorians. Tran Tramfamadorians, yes. Tramfamadorians. Oh yeah. And I was saying that your life was boring and shit. Yeah. Why do you want to go back to that, you twat? You fuck burger. Yeah, this is where it gets all philosophical. Christ, this is weird. Now they're going to be all pretentious <laughs> and, and call us out on for saying Christ. And this was, and this establishes that we were also one of the extranoids that appeared around the Earth when we came to send Dan back home. Remember that? Yeah. So you've been one of the weird extranoid faces the entire time. All along. It's not established that we were the one on the higher plane that appeared and we immediately ran away from, hmm. but we probably weren't, since it doesn't crop up you during this. You were one of the ones that killed the high one or whatever? Nah, that doesn't crop up in this sequence. Oh. Oops, accidentally skipped a bit of text there. Ah, you bumble. Destroying the universe seems like a step backwards, says Dan. <laughs> yes, the extra noids have gotten sick of our shit. <laughs> And they want us all to transcend and discover the secret of harmony and perfect peace and all that shit. 
And in the meantime, they're just forced to watch you bumble about like a bunch of dicks. Slamming your genitals into each other, making more people. What the fuck is wrong with you? It's horrible. And yeah, a bit of hand waving there. The equation just had to be created in the un in the corporal universe to work. It just had to. All right. Yeah, shut up. That's why they needed to create the think tanks. Shut up, all right. Just shut up. This is all hard stuff. You're stupid. You don't understand. Shut up. Exactly. The Extranoid's talky sprite looks a bit like the logo for Thalamus Software, an old Commodore 64 publisher. Um, doesn't ring a bell for me. Of course it wouldn't. And neither will it for anyone else. A Commodore 64, except the two guys who worked on Thalamus Software. So once everything dies, as established here, then all life can combine into the, a single perfect being. This is turning into End of Evangelion. Yeah, basically. Dun, 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 and they will become dun, God. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> That sequence is one of my favorite demented anime apocalypses, and it's, there are a few. Yeah, it's pretty mad. I was so high when I saw that the first time. I was then, like, that was ready for something odd. And and, it's like, the next thing is... they intend to do once they become god is travel to the other corporeal universes and become their actual god. That seems just like a bit of a fart around. Let's and... go be gods. Da, 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 da. And now, basically, Dan Gordon is to act as the representative for all sentient life. Hello, my name is Dan. And the extranoid will leave the choice up to him. And then we get multiple ending business. Oh, so we actually, there's a meaningful choice thing. There's a button. Ending buttons. We need ending buttons. Yes. You know, I think it's after I watched End of Evangelion and I wanted to make something this kind of crazy <laughs> and epic. I honestly don't... Topping that's going to be topping it in a way that I think's natural and not someone deliberately trying to top it. Yeah, this is like as untoppable as it goes, right? Oh, well, dude, that fucking ending is butt fucking insane. So we'll start with going along with the plan because I think the better ending is not going along with it. Okay. So Dan goes, Yeah, you're right. We're all a bunch of twats. All right, now a bunch of Ray Iron armies are going to appear and they're going to turn into things that you've been kind of horny for for at least the last 20 minutes of your life. They're going to touch you, and it's going to feel weirdly good. And now we must activate the final equation somehow. Turn into a puddle of primordial ooze, and we're all going to be one bizarre soul because Shinji's desperately wanted to burn his mother for the entire fucking series. I guess you activate the final equation by drawing an equal sign after it. <laughs> uh, no. Aww, Eric. Oh, Eric got attached to us. Eric was our friend. He's got an expressive little face, Eric. Hole wasn't. <laughs> Holes a ring. And Eric transcends. And Hole transcends. I was kind of making a joke with the end of Evangelion reference at first, but um And those guys transcend. Soon individual entities will be unable to maintain their separate forms. And Whistler transcends. Billy transcends. And the I'm gonna watch that again when I get home now. Funny little man transcends after you've downloaded City Skylines. That's right, we did it all in one session, bitches. Oh, one brutal session. Been here for eight hours. Zutalur, that must have been the Frenchman from that planet. And I think that's Whistler. See, my reading of good dialogue is you can tell who's talking just from the lines, mm. just from the words. That was probably Eric. And I wonder who that, that was. Oh, that was bromide. Yes, obviously. Uh, she doesn't have bromide. She doesn't have eyebrows either. If Hole and Bromide combined forces, there'd be one yeah. person with eyebrows. I have to wear them on the front, like in one of those baby carriers. Yes, the ultimate entity is called that because he's much, much bigger than a standard extranoid. That's basically uh. it. Yeah, so now every character we met up to this point is talking to us. Crazy, trippy. You should watch this. You should get high and watch this. <laughs> Smoke the pot and enjoy this game. So that was the merge. So that was the merge with Helios ending from Deus Ex. Where'd you steal this great music? Uh, again, RPG Maker. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking dickhead. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, let's Good pad, on MS Paint. Let's pad those credits. On second thoughts, let's watch the other ending before we watch the rest of that. <laughs> so yes, Dan makes the point that the Extranoids themselves said that life is a period where we spend time learning wisdom and patience. Yep. And there are a lot of people who still need to learn that. Mm-hmm. Hole, for example. Yeah. He's thinking of Hole. I don't want to be in the same hyper-intelligence as Tony Abbott. That makes me uncomfortable. No. Now we're being patronized. Yeah, fuck you, space face. Go eat a dick. In fact, I'm a space face. Here's a space dick. I'm gonna rub it on you. <laughs> How about some, like, damages, you know, for being in the fucking equation brain cage? Oh, I, I missed, like, eight years of work. Oh, I think Dan got what he needed out of this adventure. Well, not just Dan, you know. People in the brain cages, the brain drain oh, things, the... Well, after this point, Bromide has her brain back. Oh, good. Oh, that's Even nice. Even though we didn't. <laughs> Even though she just back. Fucking vegetable. Oh, he's alive. And he's badly drawn. <laughs> Here's some nice epilogue music. Hey, 11772. Good for you. So I did put it in somewhere. So I, I'm going to say this is the red shirt we abandoned on Remus 3. Makes He's sense. become a newsreader now. This is how the TV works on the elaborate gesture. Mm. Yeah, they project, nice swamp gas. They project it in front of the ship. So someone named Chesty Groan. Yes. So yeah, Dan doesn't remember being the linchpin of the universe's salvation. <laughs> so as far as he's concerned, he's still a spotty gimp. <laughs> Sucked in, you don't remember how important you are. Oh well. And Bromide gets to have some dialogue at last. Holy shit. I thought she was going to be an important character and then she wasn't. But she here comes thing. Dan's arc and character growth. He doesn't want to go back. Yeah, man. He's going to become part of the crew. <laughs> well, now that there's no danger, you can just chuck a red shirt down there. It's all pretty much, you know. Yeah. He can become um, the janitor. Mm. Or the science officer or the something. space janitor hey, that was a good idea for a game like he's you know he's like a space adventurer but instead he's a janitor I mean that's a that's an amusing comic wow twist no one's thought of that on like a, yeah yeah so that's the thing it's, it's, it's a comical twist it, is, it takes an established genre like hap, you know space heroes and then it inverts it so he's like not a hero so now the four musketeers are bonded together by fate for all time the three musketeers and bromide who missed the whole fucking thing and hasn't had any emotional development Hasn't connected with Dan in any way, really. Oh, they'll have time to. Pew. They're, they're all friends now. They're going to yeah. have more adventures together. Don't you find that <laughs> Sorry. heartening? Sorry, Bromide. While you were completely unconscious and we weren't fixing that problem, um, we all bonded together as friends. So now yeah. we're buddies and you're kind of like just here. Yeah. We, we can't find a nice way of saying that. Actually, could you fuck off? Yeah, we don't want you in this area, really. Um, you can find other areas and go to them. Uh, you know, so this good. is how this was the scheme I came up with for padding out the credits, which will be revisited in Poacher when we get to that. Just listing every character, and giving them a little subtitle. I I like things like that though. Yeah, I like I like a lengthy credit sequence because it feels like you've really achieved something. You know, mm. it feels like you've reached the end of the journey. Well, that, you know, these are you get some funny little uh, fluff text. It's a bit like when you know those old actually funny parody movies used to put like jokes in the yeah, credits actually, and you wouldn't leave because they'd be fucking good oh yeah I wish some video games would do that because every time I finish a video game it's like a policy of mine I have to watch through the credits just in case there's like a cool scene at the end you don't want to skip dirty Laura dirty and there's the red shirts <laughs> what are you buying ah oh. oh, I'll buy it at a high price and there's the cult Horp uh huh. Yep, every single species is represented by one dude. <laughs> Hi. 
I guess that uh, makes more sense with the extra noid. Slimy Ted's fucking eyes. And Soldy Joe. He looks a bit like an elderly Captain Haddock. <laughs> This is the Boogie Boogie Uprising song. Oh yes, and uh, we get some... That's a joke. But uh, the game keeps stock of some statistics that it can throw at us now. Hey, never broke the law. Nice. Killed nearly 20 Colthorps. And 17 neutrals. Presumably crabs. Kissy fish. Kissy fish. And for some reason we want to know that. <laughs> How we murdered 13 red shirts. Mm, got I, got no I, I got no idea where the other 10 were. Uh, you can't even complete your own game. It's a big part of that percentage is the database entries. Yeah. I couldn't for the life of me think where they all were. I mean... Hmm. Probably scanning things. Well, yes. It was, obviously it was scanning things. I just thought I'd gotten them all. Yeah. I can't oh, so remember. you actually thought you'd done the whole thing. Oh, yeah, I can't remember. It's my own game and I can't remember. Uh, all right. Figwit. Uh. And that was Adventures in the Galaxy of Fantabulous Wonderland. What did you think of Adventures in the Galaxy of Fantabulous Wonderland? <laughs> um... Well, it's hard to say because I wasn't playing it, but I can kind of see why, because I'd have gotten caught up fiddling around with the goddamn trading yeah, and trying to work I out. Like, that I am very taken glad I did not make you play that game. That would have been, been here for like eight hours. That would have been excruciating. Um, and so, I, I, mean, and they're, they're, I cut out 40 minutes of that. Oh, lordy Jesus. Yeah, so that's... With you knowing what you're doing... Yeah, that was me knowing what I'm doing. Yeah, that's, that's four hours. See, if I didn't know what I'm doing, it would have been even more epic and yeah. involving... Yeah. See, I, mean, I think that's because, yeah, they're, they're, they're in a little bit is a little bit of the problem. Because I wasn't looking, you know, and then you saved all of the fluff up until the very end when it's just like, I don't want to see this. Yeah. But um, no, I, I mean, it was... Like, so there's, there's a lot of design I would have fixed there. Yeah, there's little things that could be tweaked like that. But I think generally the, you know, the idea of like an adventure game mixed a bit with... I, I think the Red Shirts is a really cool idea. Like yeah, the way yeah, that I works. Thought, I, thought, I thought that all came together really well. Yeah, really. Fucking, it, just, it just fits into the universe well as a, a great sort of. I think I was greatly inspired mechanic. by Space Quest Five. I wanted to sort of do the whole sort of elements they had in that, where you could, you know, command your crew members. Yeah. And I had different menus and stuff, but I wanted to expand that to a more organic play style rather than a linear story. Because I think things like that are a good way of adding to what you know can really be a very dry gameplay style. Like the you know inventory puzzle thing can fucking be a grind, yes, and not fun. Um, yeah, and I think like adding like maybe I don't know I'd have probably it's hard to get a good idea of the combat because you just went diddly diddly and just leveled the fuck out of yourself like off the bat. Yeah, I'd have probably mainly well, that's just because I knew to do that. Yeah, I mean that's the thing. Um, I'd have been like oh, I'm getting hurt and died a couple of times. Yes, you would. Kind of unforgiving game. Because if you if at any point you run out of shields and die, it just goes game over, start again. Oh. If you haven't saved, then you're yeah. Fucked. Don't you? Isn't it weird to see shit like that when you go back and play older games? Where now it's just like, oh, poor yeah, diddles, crazy, right? Go and back five minutes to the auto save we did for you. And in fact, the very next game we'll be doing in the ego review has auto save. Which one's that? Twelve thirteen, the side on platformy thing. Oh, right. I haven't seen that one. So. Next time on the Ego Review, we'll be enjoying that. Mm, am I playing that one or are we watching it? I think you'll be playing that one. Oh, shit, son. Uh, it's a shorter one. Oh, good. And then the next thing for this evening, I'm going to eat some fucking dinner. Yeah, I'm... Care to join me? Yeah, let's... I need, like, wings or something and then go make... Someone make me a coffee. All right. Fuck, sleepy. fuck off, listeners. Yeah, piss off, why don't you? We out.